Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you for being with me today for our devotion. We are in the 11th chapter of 2 Corinthians, and as I mentioned yesterday, chapters 10 through 13 uh, are, are really one continuous theme as Paul is addressing his status as an apostle and the critics who looked down on him did not hold him in, in, in good measure as an apostle, if you will who were critical of him. And and I could spend easily an hour on this chapter because there is just so much truth in this chapter to talk about. But I'm not going to do all of that. I do want to mention that starting in verse 7 of chapter 11, uh, one of the things Paul was criticized for was that when he was planting the church in Corinth, he, he didn't let them support him financially. He was supported by the churches he'd already started in Macedonia. It's like if we send a missionary to another country and we pay for his or her salary. So that's what Paul was doing in Corinth. Well, after he established the church and then he left and others came in who were more impressive, as we talked about yesterday, they let the Corinthians support them financially. They actually took advantage of the Corinthians financially. And some of these critics of Paul said, wow, true apostles... Oh, it's all money and all that, and you didn't do it. Well, yeah. it's, it's, it's interesting they use the fact that Paul did not take advantage of them to attack him for not being one of the big guys, so to speak. And, um, and, and Paul makes it clear in these verses that some of those false teachers who were so outwardly impressive leading the Corinthians astray uh, – took advantage of the Corinthians to enrich themselves. I mean, think about the last 30 years in America, 40 years with some, with not all, not all, I don't want to paint with too broad a brush, but some TV preachers and some televangelists and, and all of the prosperity gospel preachers. And even some well-known pastors the, the, who have best-selling books, the, the practice that some of you don't understand, you've not heard about it, is that, you get on the New York Times best-selling list and you sell more books because of that. And some of these well-known pastors will have either their church. These are usually guys in large, really, really large churches. They'll have their church by a number or they'll have a third party by a number of books that gets them on the best-selling list. And it looks like a lot of people are buying their books, which then promotes more sales of the books. Okay, that's a common practice today, not just with pastors, but with a lot of authors out there through third parties. But the truth is, you're lying, and it's unethical. It may be legal. It may be common practice, but it's not something a man of God should do. Taking advantage of people to just get rich. It's not ethical. On and on I could go with all of that. But anyway, I won't mention any names, but you would know some of them. Devotionally, devotionally in chapter 11, what spoke to my heart is verses 23 through 28. So let's read that and then talk about it. Paul gets really personal here. He says, as well, are they servants of Christ? Talking about these false prophets, these false teachers who were impressive and they were causing people to, to, to look down on Paul and be critical of him. Are they servants of Christ? I speak as if insane. He says, what I'm getting ready to tell you sounds crazy, but I'm more so. He says, he says um, in four more labors, Okay, I've done a lot more work for God than they have. Um, far more labors and far more imprisonments. Talking about, I've been in prison several times, okay? Beaten times without number. He said, I lost track of how many times I've been beaten for the gospel. Often in danger of death. Five times I received from the Jews 39 lashes. Five times beaten with a whip. Verse 25, three times I was beaten with rods, a stick. Once I was stoned and left for dead. We read about that in the book of Acts. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I've spent in the deep. A whole night and a whole day floating in the Mediterranean Sea, perhaps. I have been on frequent journeys in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my countrymen, dangers from the Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers on the sea, dangers among the false brethren. I've been an easy life as a 
pastor, preacher, missionary, church planter. Verse 27, I have been in labor and hardship through many sleepless nights in hunger and thirst, often without food in cold and exposure. Paul said, you, you want to know what qualifies me as an apostle? I have been faithful through some of the hardest times. Then he said in verse 28, and apart from such external things, all these outward things that happened, okay, there is, now here's heart. There is the daily pressure on me of concern for all the churches. Wow. Wow. Said they take advantage of you, but I carry a burden for you. And yes, I've endured all these outward physical challenges and hardships, being faithful as one called of God to plant churches and preach the gospel where it's never been preached. And I've been faithful and it's been hard. But equal to that is the burden, Paul says, that I feel on the inside for the well-being of all these churches. That is a verse that every decent pastor can relate to because they carry with them nonstop the burden for the church. And some pastors take that burden so personally that they feel like a failure when the church isn't going well. And truthfully, sometimes church members make them feel like they're a failure and to blame for things that don't go well in the church. The balance between carrying that burden and not letting it totally identify you is not an easy one for most pastors. So I encourage you, and I'm not speaking just for me. I'm speaking for all pastors. I encourage you to pray for pastors. I encourage you to pray for them all the time. And maybe a good practice is anytime you're in the car and driving around the community and you see a church, and you may or may not. Most of the time you won't know much about that church. You may not know anything about that church or the pastors. Will you do, do me a favor? This week while you're driving around and you pass the church, pray for that church and pray for the pastor of that church, even if you don't know them because Jesus does. And I promise you, most of them, not all, but most of them are carrying some pretty heavy burdens. So when you drive around, pray for that church and pray for that pastor. And while you're at it, I'd be happy if you'd offer a prayer for me as well. Hey, God bless you. Thanks for being with me, and I'll see you tomorrow as we look at chapter 12.